joined today by J.R. Romano. Hello, hello, J.R. Romano here with the Connecticut Republican Party. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, so, well, first of all, as a reminder, please subscribe. Uh, YouTube, uh, all the other platforms at Spotify, iTunes. Um, we're going to have some fun today, let me tell you. Uh, it's been an interesting week in Connecticut politics. Um, first and foremost, on my last podcast, and I actually went on Lee Elsie show, I want to thank Lee, um, to talk a little bit about the, the the hypocrisy within the Democratic Party when it comes to these, these Chinese tariffs. And one of the things that I brought up last week was uh, the issue with, um, it's actually called honey laundering. So I kind of bring this issue to light on, on one product and in, in how the U.S. farmer and the U.S. consumer is being abused by the Chinese, uh, by Chinese businesses, by the Chinese government, to highlight why President Trump um, has taken this really hardline stance on uh, the tariffs, where he's going to uh, really push this forward uh, to a point that the Chinese are going to break. And today they did. Uh, they announced a reduction in tariffs on U.S. products going into China. So that is a win. Uh, yeah, I don't know that the Kinetic, uh, the Democrats would, would consider it a win, but it is. And what I find so funny about this whole situation, and, and I, I had not known this until we started doing some digging. Um, apparently our, our dear Congressman in the fourth congressional district, um, it actually is a is a honey enthusiast, and we decided to tweet at him the whole honey laundering issue and why Donald Trump is in fact pushing these tariffs, and to highlight an industry that he is so passionate about and what the Chinese are in fact doing to honey farmers across. And I know they're not called honey farmers, uh, but what. The Chinese government is doing to uh, these these companies, these small business owners across the country. And by the way, some of this synthetic honey has things in it that cause cancer. So this is I'm not making this up. This this is the funniest part. So I, we we take a, a a photo of Jim uh, scraping the the honeycomb, and we literally link an article to this honey laundering story. And you would have thought by the reactions of, the, of not only Jim Himes, but the the gaggle of liberals that we had shared a fake news story from CNN. Uh, ironically, CNN announced was the one that announced that the Chinese would be reducing tariffs on, on U.S. goods, so that's pretty funny. But anyway, um, they were enraged at this idea that Trump may be doing something to protect U.S. consumers. In fact, Himes said this has much to do about nothing. Much to do about nothing. The United States government under Obama banned honey. The, the EU banned honey in Europe from coming out of China. To claim that he cares about and is passionate about uh, honey is laughable. And I, I cannot believe we're actually talking about this. I cannot believe we're actually talking about this issue and trade at all. Every president since uh, before Donald Trump ignored all these issues because they were too fearful to actually take the Chinese government on. This president is doing it. And frankly, he's having success. And I recognize on the short term basis, it has had a negative impact on some sectors of our economy. I'm not stupid. Jim, I know how an economy works. I'm questioning whether you do, because what you recognize is that higher taxes are a problem, yet you stood idly by, much like you stood idly by when Elizabeth Esty was under scrutiny. You didn't call for her to resign, but I digress. You stand idly by as your party raise taxes in this state on Little League, on safety. And we all know the list. I mean, there's, an, there's literally a guide that I found today, a guide to the new taxes in the Connecticut budget 2019. A guide, Congressman. And you say nothing. And the reason you say nothing is because you are a one percenter. These taxes you don't care about. These taxes don't impact you and your family like they're going to impact the families in Norwich, in Bridgeport, in Derby, Aunt Sonia, Enfield, any blue collar community, any community that has uh, men and women that get up in the morning and punch a clock and work so hard. No, Congressman. You don't understand what your party's done to this state. And I, and I get so agitated when I see all of this liberal nonsense go online. Ta I, was, I was tagged a, a racist and a bigot because I'm shedding light 
on honey laundering. This is how insane this part. It's funny. I can't believe I'm talking about honey. Honey. Oh, my God. And then on the flip side, on the flip side and local politics, I, I can't even. This is oh, Congressman, what am I going to do with you? On the flip side, we have a first selectman in Fairfield, Mike Tetro. Mike got very angry at a video that we did um, where we called him Toxic Tetro. And with this video, we highlighted, and again, Congressman Himes at a um, Democrat, and I don't even know why the Democrats shared this out. It's like, what are you doing? Anyway, uh, Congressman Himes at a Fairfield Democrat meeting where he's on camera basically saying that the issue in Fairfield, and for those that don't know, several playgrounds and, and city facilities have been shut down. They've been tested. Some have tested positive for asbestos, for basically t- dirty dirt is a good way to explain it. It's backfill and landfill that is uh, would, should have never been approved to be used. And it's going to cost the city millions of dollars to clean up and fix. And Jim Himes is on camera saying it's not a big deal. He doesn't know all the details according to the video, but it's not a big deal. Okay, Congressman, way to do your due diligence, much like on the honey issue. It still makes me laugh, the honey issue. Anyway, um, so Congressman Himes is caught on camera saying we have to, something along the lines of we have to get our story straight. We have to, when we leave this building, we all have to be on the same page and and, and get our story straight. Now, that language is very per, uh, peculiar to me because usually when, and we've done training sessions here, whenever we're communicating in a group of people about talking about having a unified message is usually something that means something positive, right? We're going to talk about leadership or what's our message? Who are we? But no, Congressman, what you said was we have to get our story straight, which would imply you have to cover something up or at least spin it. So everyone in that room had to be on the same page with your spin. Now, the irony of of this whole thing, because Democrats always love this idea that they're these environmentalists and they care about everything. The irony to this whole thing was after we put out this video of Jim Himes and labeling uh, First Selectman Tetro, toxic Tetro because of what he allowed. And by the way, he's known this for five years. There were email correspondence going back years on this subject. Five years this goes back. It is now coming to light. Several Parks, playgrounds are still closed. He go this this first selectman, Mike Tetro, goes to social media to complain that the term toxic should not be used because it's a mischaracterization and it's gonna hurt the property values. It doesn't protect our kids. It doesn't you know what, Mike? The audacity, and I mean the audacity to want to claim that you are protecting children with a Facebook rant or that you are trying to protect the property values in Fairfield when you did nothing to save GE, when you are the one who was at the head of this controversy, you were the first selectman. It is because of your administration that the soil on playgrounds where kids play for Selectman, has asbestos, glass, dirty dirt, which is going to cost the city millions to fix and to clean up. And you have the audacity to claim that somehow you you care about children? Where was your where was your post? Where was your action? Where was this tenacity five years ago when you first learned about it? And what's, what I find very interesting about the, the Fairfield County and, and Fairfield in particular, the Democrats there are accusing Republicans of making this issue political. <gasps> oh, God, we're making an issue political. I have news for you. When it comes to the protection of children and, co- and being outraged at the incompetence and lack of leadership within administration, it's beyond political. It's about doing what's right. 
And similarly, the Democrats are taking no ownership. They want to play the victim. How dare you call me toxic, Tetro? Don't you know that's damaging to our community? No, First Selectman. What's damaging is the fact that you allowed a corrupt city-run department put asbestos and other problematic materials into the soil where children play. That, that is the, I mean, it, that takes the cake for trying to spin your way. And I guarantee that's what the, that's exactly what the Democrats came out of that meeting with, with, uh, uh, Congressman Himes. And I hope if anyone in the, in the media will ask, should ask all these Democrats, like, what was the story you came up with? You, to play the victim card that somehow say, oh, let's not make this political because you don't want to be held accountable. It's the same with the taxes. It, 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 everything, nothing is the Democrats' fault ever. Why is Connecticut's economy so bad? Uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, I have news for you. It is because of the Democratic Party. Why is the soil in, in Fairfield? Why are playgrounds shut down in Fairfield? Because of the lack of leadership within the Democratic Party, in particular, Mike Tetro. So I'm going to please spare me your outrage in protecting the citizens of Fairfield, please. It's crazy. And I, I, I don't even know. And, and I feel like I actually said had someone say to me, I get so frustrated and emotional because I, I you know, I, I do this. Because I care about my friends and family. I do this because I care about my fellow citizens. And it is mind-numbing when I listen to certain politicians. And by the way, not every Republican politician is a great politician. But I get to point to communities time and time again that are led by Republicans. Uh, and, and we have a much better track record. It's, it's astounding. And, and just look at where we are economically in this state. And all of that is on the Democratic Party. Now, speaking of... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, buffoonery. Because I, I don't know how else to describe this. Uh, our, our newly elected governor, um, fresh off of his Woodstock, fresh off of his <laughs> dirty dancing tour, <laughs> uh, he's decided to hire a new body man. And for those that don't know, a body man, and my understanding of a body man was always someone on a political campaign that would kind of keep people away from your candidate who might be a little, you know, uh, aggressive or kind of be that intermediary. Um, but generally, it's it's an aid of some kind to the candidate and or the elected official. So the governor decided to hire body man, a, a new body man at some fifty five or fifty two thousand dollars a year, I think. But what is peculiar? I'm not criticizing the body man, but what is peculiar about who he hired. His name is MC One Khan, I think. He was a former DJ, and more importantly, the son of Ned Lamont's cousin. So we have a little nepotism going on. Way to be, governor. Governor. But I honestly, I, I don't think we're giving Ned enough credit. See, I think... After all the criticism Ned Lamont got for the dancing and the Woodstock and the shirt. Oh, the shirt. God, the shirt. Anyway, for all the criticism that he got, I think what he said is, who do I know in my 1% orbit, right? All of these wealthy people that I know, who can make me cooler? Who has, you know, this edge that can make me a better dancer and hipper? And I think he landed on his on his cousin's son, who's a former DJ that has so much content out there that it's going to be hysterical to watch our old friend Max Reese explain some of this footage. And Max, it's not good. I've seen it all. We have it. The media has it. This isn't going to be pretty. Anyway, uh, on that one, good luck on trying to be cooler, Governor. I know you're trying but please ditch the shirt, please, please, for all of us. And if you're going to dance, I, I know the expression, dance like no one's watching, but we are. We are watching. You're the governor. Anyway, this is J.R. Romano. Thank you for tuning in. Like, subscribe, and please share. Appreciate it.